show of hands, who wants to make more money? Me too. Thank you. What do you think your financial advisor would say if you ask them this question and how? Nobel Prize winning economist Harry Markowitz once said that he would never be 100% invested in stocks or bonds or cash. Mm. If you think about it, games are not so different. Would you bet your entire revenue stream on one source of income? A more sustainable revenue model calls for a mindset shift. Our industry seems to operate in a way that your monetization model is determined by your genre. Ads for hypercasual, IP for rest of mobile, and subscriptions for PC and console. This has worked so far, but in this talk, I'd like to invite all of you to challenge these assumptions together with me. Our economist friend Harry said that we shouldn't put all of our eggs in the same basket. Can we take learnings from other genre and rethink our current strategy? No rule saying that you have to do something just because you're born this way, right? In 15 minutes, you'll hear from one of your peers about their innovation. But first, let me set the stage and talk about monetization diversification, the why, the what, and the how. Why diversify? Our economist friend Harry said that we should balance our income sources because it decreases risk and increases revenue. True or not true? If you disagree, come find me after this talk. What you might not know is that we also have big data to back up this claim. We plotted the top grossing games on this graph to your right. Each dot is a game. On the x-axis is a percentage of the game's revenue driven by its top 5% of buyers. On the y-axis is the game's churn buyer's reactivation rate. This means that the more to the right, the more concentrated is your game's revenue. This negative correlation shows that if a game squeezes its buyers, then they're also less likely to come back if they ever leave. Therefore, we call this philosophy, one dollar out of everyone is more sustainable than $100 out of one player. Now, if I got you thinking about diversification, let's touch on some of the trends we've observed. Subscriptions, rewarded ads, and IAP. Raise your hand if you have at least one of these implemented. What about two of these? All three? Good for you. So here's the deal. I would not claim that everything I'll be sharing with you today will be groundbreaking. But my hope for you is that after this talk, you will have learned something new. And more importantly, find the inspiration from your peer stories to try something new and add to your current strategy. Now raise your hand if you have subscriptions in your games. Are you thinking about it? Raise your hand if you're thinking about it. Awesome. Subscriptions is not a foreign concept in gaming. From PC to console, many have used subscriptions as a content pass. However, today, I'd like to talk to you about a different kind of subscriptions. Instead of bundles, how are mobile games layering subscriptions on top of IAP to create different tiers of premium experiences? The momentum around subscriptions has accelerated on mobile in recent years. On Play, we've seen a global mobile gaming subscriptions growth of 70% year over year. In fact, those who implement subscriptions reported a boost in both retention and revenue. Mixi saw 20% more play and Scopely reported higher LTV when they have subscriptions. If those are not enough reasons for you, at Google I.O. earlier this year and also this morning, we talked about digital well-being. Many top developers like Kaban are prioritizing sustainable growth. So I challenge you, leaders in the mobile gaming industry, to think about what does digital well-being look like as a mobile game? With subscriptions, can we restructure short-term impulse buys into long-term sustainable benefits? Maybe instead of eating all of your Halloween candies in one go and possibly regret it next morning, can we instead have something sweet 
every day for the next few months. Designing subscriptions requires a mindset shift from IAP. It may be tempting to repackage IAP SKUs into subscription bundles. It works, but there's so much more you can do. The keyword here is access. The main difference between IAP and subscription is that while IAP is about ownership, where the users get to keep what they buy, subscription is about access. Access to different tiers of premium experiences and access that you can gain and lose. There are two main use cases of subscriptions. The first is aimed at converting new buyers. These buyers are often motivated by a good financial deal. Scopely subscriptions offer exclusive rewards that an early buyer would want on top of the IAP deal. Service right after Fatui with loss protection and higher daily caps. This subscription aims to increase these early buyers' time spending gain to form a habit of playing still early in their life cycle. The second use case of in-game subscriptions is to create a loyalty program for your high-value buyers, much like the mileage program by airlines. These players are often motivated by prestige, rewards for the commitment in your game, or just a little bit more premium experience. Ludia offers their VIP subscribers extra currency, exclusive tournaments, early access to new content, and access, again, the keywords access, to a special durable that may even strengthen with time. Designing access is key to make your in-game subscription additive to your existing IAP economy. If you're thinking, OK, what about cannibalization? Hold that thought and wait for Faye. Now, raise your hand if you have rewarded ads implemented in your games. Awesome. Those with your hands raised, you can take a nap now. Although you might want to stay awake for something that may be a surprise to you. Earlier this year, the Google AdMob team conducted their research and uncovered a growing segment of developers who were previously IAP only are now rethinking their overall monetization strategy and as a result are implementing rewarded ads. There are three main reasons why you should think about rewarded ads. The first, it lets you monetize the non-payers, especially in developing countries, emerging markets. These players, while they might be more reluctant to take out their wallet and make purchases, they might be more willing to trade with their time instead. The second benefit is that it also increases overall engagement across buyers and non-buyers. Many game developers use rewarded ads as a way to extend gameplay or gift a minimal amount of IAP. This increased time spent for everyone, which in turn increases social liquidity, which then enhances the experience of everybody playing. Now, the third reason, which may be a surprise to you, is that it also predicts IAP conversion. Congregate found that across six of their games, players who watched an ad in their very first session are 2.5 to 5 times more likely to make subsequent purchases. Of course, we can't say that watching an ad will cause you to spend, but there is a clear correlation between the group of people who watch ads and the group of people who are likely to make in-app purchases. Now, AdMob also shared with us a framework to help you optimize your rewarded ads design. Let's see what Congregate has to say for each of these. For placement, rewarded ads should be core to your gameplay as part of your in-game economy. The reward itself should be useful, meaningful, while not competing directly with IAP. For targeting, everybody should have access to rewarded ads but the user should initiate the experience as to ensure to not interrupt their gameplay. For cadence, more is necessarily better. Congregate found that six to eight ads views per viewer per day maximizes return, with the option to watch at least one per session. For measurement, remember to segment your core health metrics by ad viewership and frequency. 
And if you notice a certain cohort of users are spending less time or money, test and iterate. Use this framework. Now, if you're itching to test out rewarded ads quickly, this morning we announced rewarded products that's coming soon. Directly in your console, this uses the same API calls as IAP. If you're interested, talk to your Play BD manager. Lastly, IAP. I will not ask for hands, as I assume most of you have IAP implemented. But for now, please stand here why game developers who found success previously with ads are now also pushing for IAP. Similar to the trend with rewarded ads. While IAP itself is new, what is new is the growing number of developers who were previously ads only are now adding IAP to the existing titles or developing new IAP-based titles to increase their portfolio diversity. For example, Taps Games, a Brazilian developer, is known for their hyper-casual games, but decided to focus on IAP in their Bitwars titles. After growing their IAP revenue by 200% and more, IAP is now an integral part of the strategy. Let's remind ourselves the advantages of IAP. First, it can be run and developed by simple team, by nimble team with simple infrastructure. We've seen teams as small as 10 people managing multi-million dollar titles. Second, instead of relying on a huge user base or massive installs, IAP pushes us to think about long-term sustainable business metrics. And last, IAP gives you control and flexibility over your game and your revenue. Now, for those of you thinking about IAP, let's quickly touch on the design framework. Yodo One is the pub Chinese publisher of Rodeo Stampede. They managed to shift their ads to IAP ratio from 30% IAP to 60% IAP. Let's see what they recommend. For design, keep it simple and flexible. While try to monetize as many users as possible by giving the user their choice of currency such as IAP or ads. For conversion, understand what uniquely motivates each segment of your users will help you create targeted offers. And for retention, content is king. And build a customizable live op system early, which will save you time later on. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Faye, who leads operations from Network, to talk to you more about in-game subscriptions. Is this, is this the okay. Thank you, Moonlit. Hi, everyone. I'm Faye Griffin. I'm VP of Operations at Network. Who are we? We are 90 people headquartered in San Francisco with offices in LA and Santiago, Chile. We believe there are five features that make up a great game. Gotcha. We sell gotcha card packs every week. And for those of you who don't know, aren't familiar with gotcha card packs, think Pokemon or baseball cards. We introduce rarity in our game. We have weekly events we run. We have social component in our game, guilds. And we also have store. Our first game out in the market that combines all of these features is Legendary Game of Heroes. An overview of Legendary, it's two years old. We have guilds in the game. We run weekly events. It's primarily IAP driven, and we have VIP subscriptions. So today, I'm going to talk to you about subscriptions and why you should care. But before I do that, I'm just going to give you 30 seconds on our business model. Most of our players don't pay, but we have a very small percentage of players who do pay. Now, we care about all of our players coming back every day, month over month, year after year, but we especially care about that small percent who do pay. So when we thought about subscriptions, we saw an opportunity to be generous. We'd happily give away $100 in value every month if we knew you were going to show up every day, month after month, year after year. And it's working. Since we introduced subscriptions last April, our subscription base has grown month over month. So we're doing something right. A few top lines about our subscriptions. In Legendary, we brand our subscriptions as VIP. And during this 
talk, I'm going to use those terms interchangeably, subscriptions and VIP. It's $29.99 a month. Our VIP are a small but growing portion of our revenue. We have 30,000 active subscribers. We have a day 425 retention of 20% with our VIP actives. We have a 95% login rate of VIPs. And so far, cannibalization is not a factor. And our cost per player is coverable by our VIPs. Some key considerations we thought about when uh, introducing VIP subscriptions. We thought of subscriptions as a loyalty program that provide premium access. Another thing to think about is monthly versus yearly access. Right now, we just have monthly, and I'm going to tell you a little story about why. So one of the unique things about our culture at Network is that we believe great ideas can come from anywhere. And our subscriptions actually came from our, one of our client engineers on Legendary, Shu. He came to us and said, hey, Google's now offering the ability to do subscriptions. I think we should put that in our game. Should be like the Amazon Prime of subscriptions for Legendary. So we got a great feature from our client engineer, but the downside was we didn't have a 20-person design team thinking about it. So we didn't think of all the ins and outs of subscriptions when we first implemented it. So we got a really great system, but some constraints in that it's not as extensible as we would like it to be, but we're fixing that now. Another thing to think about is how much you can discount IAP for the promise of future revenue. The bet we made was that subscriptions would be highly retentive. So we bet long-term future revenue would benefit us. The other thing to think about is that subscriptions must provide convenience to the player. You should make it a no-brainer. A subscription player, after having experience playing the game with subscriptions, cannot imagine playing the game ever again without a subscription. The other thing you need to consider is rewarding and celebrating your loyal subscribers. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate through VIP events, VIP offers. Our VIPs can actually reach us any time of the day to give us feedback. Subscriber players must feel like they belong to a community that's appreciated by the game devs. And tie subscriptions to loyalty pro programs whenever possible. So some challenges. I'm going to talk about intuitive messaging and standout UX together, because they kind of go hand in hand. One thing we asked ourselves was, how do we communicate VIP benefits in as clear a way as possible with as few words as possible? One of the ways you can do that is by differentiating what the game looks like for non-subscribers versus subscribers. One way we did this was through color. Our non-subscribers, the steady state of the game is blue. For our subscribers, it's purple, the color of royalty. Everywhere you get a VIP benefit, we theme it purple, as you can see from the mock-up on the screen. If you turn off VIP, the game looks very different for you. It's pretty obvious. We built it into the core loop. If you play as a VIP, you can't help but see the benefits. If you turn it off, it's obvious. Everywhere you lost something is super clear. We also think of our VIPs. They're not only VIPs in the game, but also outside of the game. We actually have a Slack channel where our VIPs can communicate with us. Their customer service tickets get flagged, and they're handled separately. Every interaction a subscriber player has must be a moment of delight and reinforce that they are a VIP. Another thing to think about is when to sell subscriptions. We run weekly events, so we might put a pop-up in the game a day before an event starts to advertise how what you get out of a VIP subscription can help you in the events. This one I put in here from, for the devs, shared account prevention. We needed a way, we needed to build into a system a way to prevent multiple players who share a single Google account from exploiting and get unfair advantages. And lastly, you need to ensure that you have high caliber customer support and that your customer support team is properly equipped to benefit your subscribers. So IAP versus subscriptions. Many people think of subscriptions are just auto renewal of IAP, but we think of them very differently. 
To echo what Moonlit said earlier, subscriptions are access. They're highly retentive, long-term access to content. IAP is content. It's a one-time situational purchase of content. Conceptually, we think of them very differently. Subscriptions help underwrite our revenue and improve our payer retention. It also gives us a way to personalize IAP offers based on a player's subscription tier, rather than having one storefront for everyone. Subscriptions can boost IAP economy through increased value of products for subscribers. And this is at no cost to other IAP products. In other words, we have seen no cannibalization. Some things we wish we considered. Google's subscription service has some really great features. Free trials, auto renewal of trials and deals, so for instance, three months at a discounted price, time cards, providing an alternative IAP to gain temporary access to subscribing, so for example, like a three-month Xbox Live card. Those are all things that are currently on our roadmap. Now, if I'm to leave you with three key learnings, one would be, Given its high retention, the VIP subscription should be the number one thing people buy. It should be a no-brainer to them. The value they get out of it is a no-brainer. Two, framing is everything. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate your VIP subscribers both inside and outside the game. And lastly, build fast but maintain the ability to iterate. This is where we are now. Thanks so much for your time. And with that, I'll give it back to Moonlit. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Now, let's conclude our session. As you think about the takeaways for this session, I have three hopes for you. First, I hope you found the inspiration to go back and reinvent your monetization strategy. Second, I hope that you believe now your past doesn't necessarily dictate your future. And third, I hope you will go back to your teams and ask them why shouldn't we diversify more? With this, I'll end the session with one question for you. When was the last time you had a sit-down meeting with your team to actively decide the current status quo is also the best strategy going forward? Thank you.